Okay guys, here we go again, another electrical related video. Just the other day I was in my attic inspecting all the wiring, very carefully moving the insulation to the side around each one of the light fixtures as well as ceiling fans and also checking junction boxes to make sure they have their covers in place. And when I came to the ceiling fan you see right here, I noticed a very big problem. One that's actually very common in much older homes like this one. People hire a handyman and they don't do the job properly. And what they do is they just drill a hole in the ceiling. They'll route the Romex wire through the hole. And they'll either put a hook to hang the fan or they'll screw the mounting bracket for the fan directly into the joist and have the wire connect up to the fan. That's the problem with this fan. Whoever did it did a lousy job. There's no electrical box. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to correct the problem to make it to code. First thing I'm going to do is turn off the power to the fan. This whole process should not take too long, but you're going to see. Now the ceiling I have is a plaster sheet ceiling because this home was built in the late 1950s. You may have drywall. The process is going to be exactly the same. It's just going to be much easier to cut the drywall. Now I just need to take the screws out of this cover. I'll do the rear side first. Okay, just rotate the cover. Sure enough, there's just a hole in the sheetrock and there's no box. Pathetic. Let me disconnect all this wiring and then we're going to lift the fan out of the socket and then we'll take a closer look. Okay, so right here you can see the Romex cable coming through the ceiling. Removing the fan is very simple. I'm going to lift up to me and down. Okay, so right over here running this way is a joist in the attic. So I'm going to unscrew that. There was no chance of the fan falling down, but it was definitely not done properly. And I've seen this so many times over the years when working on different homes. At least they use long screws, that's a good thing. Okay. Now the electrical box that I'm going to use to make this right is this fan rated pancake box. You can pick this up at any home improvement store. And the reason why it's good, you can see there's a steel plate that's threaded on this one piece box. So there's really nothing to pull apart. You know on other boxes, the tabs are bent over. And as months and years go by with the fan vibrating, those tabs can snap off and your fan can fall down. So this one is nice because it's the one piece and it's threaded. The next step is going to be take this cover off and I'm going to center it where I want to make the cut for this box. So let me take this off and we'll go back to the ceiling. Now I know the joist is running this way. What I want to do is find the edge of it coming towards me, this direction. So I'm going to take a small drill bit, keep drilling straight in until it no longer hits wood. Because this is plaster, I'll be using this carbide tip drill bit. If you have drywall, you can use 8 inch high speed steel. To keep the mess to a minimum, you're going to take the drill bit, this end, and you're going to insert it, this end first, through the plate. So you're going to hold it like this. Just work it through, twist it. All right, like that. So now when you drill, you're going to have a lot of the crumbs, or most of it, captured in the plate, and you can just dump the plate out. Right there is nothing. What's here? Okay, actually appears that the, the wood is in the center. Let's see. So that edge missed. Let's see where it ends over here. Let's try. Still in wood. Now that I have an idea where the joist is between my fingernail and the side of this cable, 
Now I'm just going to straighten the wires out a little bit so I can push them off to the side here. I want to get an idea of where my box is going to be positioned. Looking at this box, you can see the knockout locations. This is off to the left, so I'm going to position this more to the left and use the one over here on the far right. So I can block these two as long as I leave the one open, I'll be good. So I want to center that on the wood where it's going to be, mark it with a pencil, and then we're going to go on to the next step. The area is properly marked for that box. Over here is the wood with the X. Over here, far right side, will be where the knockout is with the Romex clamp for the cable. Now what I need to do is take a 3 8 inch carbide drill bit, make a hole right here on the inside of that line, and do the same thing on the opposite side. Good idea to have a shop vac handy. Hold it to the side, drill, because when you also go to cut this, you're going to be using a saber saw with an abrasive blade, in my case, a diamond grip blade. It's going to cut very easy through this plaster board. Using drywall, just use a drywall saw, the mini jab type, and just go all the way around. When you get over the areas with the wood, just take a utility knife with a fresh blade, keep cutting deeper and deeper over the wood area, and the whole piece will pop out. Here the holes are drilled. I can now insert the jigsaw blade, cut over to the wood that way, this way, this way, and that way. And at the very end, I can hold the saw at an angle to try and cut into over the wood here, and the same over here. You can also use an oscillating tool with a carbide grit or diamond blade and easily finish off that surface over the wood. Okay, you can see on the back of my jigsaw, there's some painter's tape to protect the ceiling so it doesn't get all scuffed up. And over here is that diamond grip blade. I'm going to make the cut, but I'm going to push the wire up higher because I know it's coming in from this direction. I'll push it up when I make the cut so I don't cut it. But I'm not too worried about cutting it because there's like five feet of extra cable in the attic that I'm going to pull down. I'm going to hold the shop vac right next to that blade as I'm cutting to prevent all that fine dust from coming down, and I'm also going to be wearing a mask. You can see a clean cut has been made all the way around to where the wood is. Same on this side. Now I'm going to take my oscillating tool with a diamond grip blade, very carefully cut along this line, and the same on this side. And then this whole piece is going to fall down with some insulation. Before it falls down, I'm going to try and cut almost all the way through so I can hold a big container under it and then slowly pop this piece out. Everything here is looking good. The nail is gone. This is clean and I shortened up the wire. In the process of popping out this knockout, which is going to end up on the right side. Included in the kit, you have these bolts, a ground screw, and a restraint right here. I made out of plastic. Alright, so the first thing I want to do now is see if this is a flush fit with the metal here to there. Let's see something gets screwed in right there. It's a little below. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a shim behind it just to bring it down just a little bit more because I don't want to tighten the fan bracket against this thick plaster and put undue stress that can cause cracks. So let me find something really thin to lay over here before the box gets screwed in. See there's a couple of composite shims in position using some latex caulk. I wanted that box flush and the wood was slightly angled and the sheetrock was a little thicker in one spot, a little thinner in another. 
So I had to compensate for it because I wanted that box flush. So now I'm ready to hold it in position. Let me pull the cable down. I'll push it through the hole and I'll put the first screw in. Right here's about the length of wire that you want, about five inches. You don't want to go seven or eight because you're not going to have that much room inside the box to tuck away the wire. The bushing is a slit on the side. Open it up, put it around the Romex, push this in until it clicks, and then I'm going to drill the first hole. And there you have it. Excellent. You can't pull any more cable down. With this complete, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole here and there to insert these bolts. About an inch and three-eighths long, inch and a half. It's going to go straight through into that two by six. Two bolts, more than sufficient to hold up a fan. If you're using a Hunter fan that's cast iron, I'd put at least three. But most of your fans are not going to be cast iron, and I believe that just two of these alone would definitely hold up a cast iron Hunter fan. All right, solid and flush. That's what you want. You want to have it flush. If I didn't put the shims, this side would be in about an eighth, and this side would be sticking out about an eighth. So by using the shims, perfectly flat. When I put the bracket on, it'll stop pushing against the ceiling as soon as it touches that metal edge. The next thing I want to do is insert the ground screw right over here. With the ground screw in, you're going to take that ground wire, try and keep it a little bit longer, you want to wrap it clockwise around the head of that bolt. If you have to, take a needle nose to complete that loop. Tighten that down securely. That looks great. And it also prevents this cable from being pulled in the opposite direction. So you can't pull it inward because of the connector and you can't pull it the other way. So that's great. Push these off to the side. Now I want to fill in these areas right around here with some sealant. And I'm also going to take foil tape. I want to cover these holes here to prevent hot air from the attic infiltrating into the room. So let me go get it. This right here is foil tape for an AC duct. Just cut a small little square out of it. When you live in a hot climate, you want to do everything possible to prevent heat from finding its way from your attic into your house. That is perfect. Okay, that looks great. No more openings. Now I'm going to seal around the edge with some caulking, a little bit of joint compound here, and then I'm going to hang the fan back up. There are actually some people out there that would leave it looking like a mess. You want to go towards the box, not outward, because if you go outward, it's going to end up all over your ceiling and you're going to have a mess. Keep it away from the screw hole there. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to inject a little into these openings here. Good. Good. Just wipe it. That's all. Nice. Do the same thing over here. This way all we'll have is the hole for the screw to mount the bracket. Put it right next to the rivet. Pump it in. Now let me just fill these two holes. All right, the next step is I'm going to push these off to this direction because it's going to be mounted like that. 
The fan's going to go back in that direction. I'm going to strip these wires. The black is to the light, the red is to the fan motor, and then the neutral. Let me get that all done, and we'll come right back. Okay. Solid, baby. That's how you do it. That's the right way to do it. Now put the fan back in the holder so I can wire everything up. Twist it until it locks in. There you go. Okay, it looks good. Now when I go back in the attic, what I'm going to do is take the loose fill insulation and very carefully push it back over where this box is. Now I'm not going to staple the Romex cable close to this box. The reason why you don't want to do it, when you're dealing with an older home with plaster ceilings, if you start putting staples and hammering them into the joist, it's going to possibly crack the ceiling. You don't want to do it. No one's going to be in the attic pulling on your Romex cable. It'll be there for decades. But some people insist on nailing it. If you want to do it, fine. I suggest if you have an older home, do not nail it back in. The Romex cable is secured more than enough to that steel box, so you have nothing to worry about. And here it is, all completed. Now I know it's done properly. And if you ever experience this problem, you're going to know exactly what to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.